<laughs> but I had to make it look good. Sure. So I walked up with him. I said, okay. I said, all right, Chad. I go, you're for the, the match of your life. And he was, he was like, excuse me? He was like, I'm like, oh, God. You know, I'm, I'm in trouble. At least if I can make this look, at least look, look, make it look presentable. You know, have a little pride. You know, don't go down right away. Just try to stick it out, you know? Sure. So he walks up with me. And I grab his hand. It was like walking up with an outfield with baseball mitt. I mean, his hand went down on my, almost my, my wrist. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm in trouble. And before he could even say, okay, go, my fist, my arm went through the table. I was like, broke right through the table. <laughs> and and I was like, all right. Well, I had I have uh, the honor of wrestling the, the great Chad Eaton. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. It was just like, I, I thought I could do a little better than that. But the guys were telling me, I was talking to Chris Slade, and Chris Slade told me, uh, he says, yeah, he's beaten he's beaten all the uh, – He's beaten all the Patriots. I think one of the other managers said to me, he, God, he wrestled Willie McGinnis. He beat McGinnis that. God, he's a beast. He arm wrestled McGinnis. He arm wrestled Slade. He arm wrestled everyone on the team and beat everybody. And he's just, that's his, that's his, his thing, is arm wrestling. And he says, to lose to Chad Eaton, that's, it's still respectable. Because Chad Eaton's one of the best arm wrestlers in the world. So just the fact that they actually nominated you to wrestle him is, is, is an honor. But the fact that some put money on you, Someone put fifty dollars in you, <laughs> and you win. I was like, I am honored that you that you actually put money in me. <laughs> uh, but it was, oh my lord! You don't you don't realize how big some of these wrestlers, NFL guys are. When you see them in person, you know, it just it's it, it, it blows your mind how big these guys are. Seven feet tall. Even McGinnis was there. He was like, I don't know what they register him at as his height, but he looked like he was like six nine. I mean, he was like, wow, you know. No, I, it is, I have no part of that, man. No part of that. At all. It was, uh, it was really something, man. It was, yeah. I think I'm, I'm all set talking about Chad Eaton for now. <laughs> I got 100. percent I got 100 percent respect for Chad Eaton, one of the strongest guys I've ever seen in my life. So I'll just let it go with that, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have some new respect for Chad myself. I don't think I'll be. <laughs> so, uh, any, have you ever given any thought of stepping back in? into the bodybuilding realm and uh, getting up on stage, or is that uh, completely in the past for you? Uh, you know, you always, we always we always want to try to do things that we used to do. Uh, I, I mean, it, it would, it, I would like to, but it's almost like, uh, unless you can be 100% on your game, you almost don't want to, you know? Sure. I mean, I, w- I would like to. But then you think, you know, oh, man, I got a, I got a bad back from wrestling. I got a, I got a bad knee from wrestling. Do I, I, you know, can can I really train as hard as I want to with the kids and crazy schedules, you know? But it, it'll always be a passion. I, mean, I always, I never rule, I never say never, because I think even right now I'm still in very good shape. But like I said, I, I never say never. But I don't, I don't know. It's almost like. It's hard to even say, man. It's, you always want to. You're always a kid at heart, and I'm always I'll always be a young guy. Even as I get older, you know, mentally I always feel like I'm I'm 21. Sure. Uh, but sometimes I don't know. You just gotta let let it go. I think, you know. Uh, but I had I had I had a great a great time with it, and like I said, I never rule it out. But it's it goes back to all the respect I have for all those athletes that it takes such a, as you know, it takes such a great amount of discipline and sacrifice, and you got to dedicate 100% of your time and effort to it, you know? And I get too much respect for any sport, whether it be bodybuilding or wrestling or anything. If I couldn't give it my 100% effort in my diet, in my nutrition, I know I could do it, but if I could, I have too much respect for any sport, but if I couldn't do it 100%, the way I wanted to, I, I wouldn't want to do it. Right. I just I get too much respect for the other athletes and, and you guys and everybody else to to, to do that. My, that's uh, just you know, it was me. I'm a I'm a hundred percent father right now, and that you know, uh, I, I'm not saying anything against competitors that or athletes that compete, you know, and our parents at the same time, but mm-hmm. you, you know, with me being a hundred percent father, that that's always my priority. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. You. you. You know, you'll get to midweek. I'll get to midweek, and the wife will say, "This weekend we got that. This weekend we got this. This weekend we got that." 
and you know I, I'm a man I can't juggle all that stuff in my head I just follow, <laughs> follow <laughs> blindly it, man. so I you, big, you said it man I have big respect for these people uh, that have kids and compete because I, I don't I could never do it in a way absolutely man it's just you know it, it's a sign of time they always say I mean, I'll always be a part of it, though. I'll always follow it. I'll always, I see young guys in my gym all the time, any gym I go to, and they're always sitting there. They might say, oh, what can I do for my arms, or how can I train my legs, or something. I'm always, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always asking guys myself, man, what, what can I do to help me? I'm getting older. What can I, what else I have to do for this? Or how much cardio do you do here? What do you do for this? So I'm, I'm always asking questions, but I'm always taking questions from other guys. So I'm always around it. And for me, that, that, that fills the void. It's, it, it, even if you're not a competitor, I mean, even if you're not a competitive bodybuilder, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not in, in a wrestling ring anymore. Uh, I'm still around it, man. I still enjoy watching it at times. I still enjoy, you know, being in the gym and helping young guys. Or uh, it's, it still fills the void, man. Just, just to be around it, and you know, it, it, it's not the same as it used to be. You know, like you know, in the, in the fall of 2000, uh, I was in contract with Joey Styles at ECW for a scheduled tryout, which I was. That was a, a huge honor. It went, it went bankrupt. But, uh, you know, there's, there's all these things I look back on. It's, I, I miss it. You know, I, I miss that stuff. It was, it was such a great time. And, I mean, it's, it's a great way to fill the void, to just try to stay around it and, and be active in it. Because to just let it, you know, shut it off, cold turkey. That's why some of these athletes go, go crazy, you, you know, like you, you said earlier. But I think it's why you know, if you're not an active competitor, as long as you're still involved in it and still doing things, like even with the modeling and the photo shoots and the fitness, as long as it's still included in that, that that does it does fill the void, you know? You know what I'm getting at? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, but that's 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 what it is, man. I mean, you know, it, it, it's kind of a funny statement, but you know, even guys I've known over the years, especially back in the, the 90s, mid-90s, late 90s, they would always say, you know, I was referred to by many that I knew over the years. It's like an Irish version of Ricky Williams. And I say that because I'm a relatively shy and humble person. And, you know, they said, no, you guys' physiques are very similar. I got quite a few tattoos. I got when I, when I wrestled, made a transition from wrestling, uh, from bodybuilding to wrestling. I got a bunch of, uh, you know, strategical place tattoos. But sure. I've, always, I've always matched the beat of my own drum. And I've always done things my own way. And sometimes it's been a little, little scrutiny there. Sometimes I've caught, I've got a little bit of flack, and some people don't always agree with you know, my training methods or my, my rationale. But uh, you know, it just I have no regrets, man. My my case in point, when I look back on this stuff, and like I said, the bodybuilding and the and the wrestling and the modeling, I did I did it the best I could, man, with what I had. And you know, as I get older, I, I even all those things I wish I could have done that I didn't do. The main thing is that I have I, I did everything at a hundred percent, man. It's like like all the guys on, on, on your site, they train hundred percent. They have no regrets because they break their ass, and that's the the only thing you can do. You know, you know? The, the point you bring up, it, you know, really ties into what we talked about earlier and enjoying the ride. You know, I, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I I, I do my own thing, train my own way, and you know, mm-hmm. a lot of times it's not conventional with. Uh, you know, standard wisdom or whatever, but, you know, the point I try to stress and the point you just made is is part of enjoying the process is just being your own person, you know, learning your own body and just enjoying the ride. And I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with you, man. Uh, you know, I mean, anything I wanted to do, usually I did, and even if someone would say, what are you doing that for, or why do you want to do this, it's, it even goes back to these young guys. Uh, training. If you feel that you know you want to train a certain way and you think you're gonna get a lot of benefits out of that, then do it. 